Hey everybody, it's Patrick. It is Thursday afternoon and um, I'm running an errand right now for my theater. Um, and I thought while I was doing that, I would actually uh, take you guys on a quick tour of the theater. This is the theater that I work at uh, all around uh, the year. Um, it's a community theater. We're a nonprofit community theater. We've been around for about 70 years or 75 years, something like that. Um, it was originally started as a social club uh, for uh, people interested in theater. We've done some really great productions here. Um, I like it because I get to do theater without uh, having to lose my day job. Um, I, you know, I theater generally, it's very few people who can get paid for doing it um, all the time, uh, you know, as a profession. And I got into it late in life. I actually started uh, doing theater regularly. I did it in high school and I did a little bit in college, but I only started doing theater regularly when I turned 30. I auditioned for my first show um, uh, on my 30th birthday because it was in the middle of the week and we weren't doing anything. And I thought, well, I might as well give this a shot. Um, so anyway, this has been my home base for 17 years, 18 years, something like that. Um, and I figured I would show you around and let you know, uh, you know, what happens here and everything. And, you know, it's just like a little tour. Um, so let's get started. So one of the things you should know is that um, a lot of community theaters don't have their own playhouse. Um, they may have to uh, work uh, through a church. They may rehearse in a library or something, and then they'll uh, perform at a junior high or something like that. So we are lucky enough that, that we have this little red schoolhouse, um, and we uh, have owned it for quite some time, and we're able to actually uh, use it for our performances and for our rehearsals. Okay, so now I'm inside the lobby. Um, like I said, we're really lucky to have our own um, uh, space. Uh, a lot of places that are um, uh, community theaters in Boston. A community theater means different things in different regions of the country. Uh, sometimes community theaters, like down in the South, are large productions. Uh, they have a full-time staff. Um, they're not run like uh, by volunteers like they are up North. In the Boston area, theater, um, you have professional theater and then you have community theater. And community theater is volunteer run. It's usually nonprofit. Um, and we usually have very small budgets. Um, the, uh, the Playhouse is something that we've had for a very long time here, and we are uh, able to do a lot more uh, with less money because we're able to do it in the same space. So as you can see, uh, this is the lobby. Um, right now, we don't have uh, a production going um, because it's the summertime and this is an old building. Uh, the, the lobby we're in is brand new. We've uh, created it, uh, built it a couple of years ago, like, oh God, it might even be five, 10 years ago now. But originally um, the playhouse actually started uh, where these double doors are. Um, so uh, all of this that's behind me, including the handicapped bathrooms, which is why we built the lobby, so that we could comply with uh, handicapped access laws, um, is new. So uh, that's actually an expense for us because we um, have to pay for it, and it was a very expensive addition. Um, so now we're walking through the lobby. Um, like I said, this is the original uh, lobby of the Playhouse. Um, very small. We used to have uh, where this wall is was a box office. It was very, very small. Um, you would be crammed into there uh, for uh, if you were doing ticket sales or whatever. But now it's uh, much more open, much nicer. So by design, a lot of theater space is very dark until you turn on the lights. So the um, you know, the, the stage lights. Um, and I don't want to mess with uh, the production that's going on now. Like I said, the theater is usually dark during the summertime, but we do allow a children's theater production to uh, happen during the summertime. I guess the little kids don't mind the heat quite so much. Um, right now, I believe that what's going on in this theater right now, um, wow, the lighting's terrible here right now. Um, I'm just using a big scoop light. Uh, is uh, Cinderella. Uh, no, sorry, Snow White. Uh, they, they're they doing um, Snow White, as you can tell. They have the woods, and they have the castle, and all of that. So um, it's probably going to be a really fun production. I'm here today 
uh, because I was asked to help with the sound. Uh, the director and the stage manager, the stage manager is actually, I think, 15 or 16 years old, um, and she had never run sound before. So I showed her how the uh, soundboard worked and how to load in music and uh, sound effects and stuff, and then they asked me if I could find some sound effects for them, which I have right here on my little uh, hard drive. So I'm going to add those in uh, for their production so they can play that tomorrow. But while I'm downstairs, I will show you uh, right behind me. Uh, we are known as, uh, it's called a black box theater, and a black box theater is different uh, in that it doesn't necessarily have a proscenium stage. Proscenium means that the stage is, um, you, the audience is in one place and the stage is right in front of you. Uh, black Box has a little bit more, you're, you're really in on the action, which I like. I like Black Box productions. I like to direct them and be in them because you're really close to the audience. In fact, I'm on the stage right now, and right behind me, you can see, that's where the audience starts. Um, and actually, we are in, uh, we're not in the round. Uh, in the round would mean that the audience goes all the way around the stage. But as you can see, we have these two rows right here of seats, and then there's the large side. We call this the big side. Um, this theater is uh, can accommodate, I believe it's 175 people, maybe a little bit less. Uh, it's a pretty good size. You don't want uh, too big of a theater for your production just in case uh, you don't get a large audience. Uh, about 175 people is a great audience. Uh, it's intimate, and yet it feels like a lot of folks. But if you have a production that doesn't have quite so many audience members, it also doesn't feel like the, um, like the theater isn't uh, crowded or something. Um, I have done shows in auditoriums that can seat 1,000 people. And when 25 people show up, that doesn't look like very many folks. But um, if you have a, a space like this, if you get 25 to 50 people, it's going to feel like a nice audience. So I am going to head upstairs into the booth, and we will show you that. Um, and that's where I do a lot of my work, especially if I'm stage managing, or I'm running lights, or I'm running sound, or something like that. Okay, so up here is what's known as the booth. Um, the booth is where the uh, stage manager sits. As you can see, uh, they have a communication system. Um, uh, this is the light board. So the light board is where you have all of your lighting cues. As you can see, um, each one of these is built on a slider. So you can have your lights go up or down by various levels. And then over here, is where the cues are called. So the uh, stage manager who sits in the middle uh, tells you what cue to go, and then when the cue goes, uh, basically the lighting designer, the light, uh, the light operator, um, runs the cues. If they need to go back, um, they can always uh, hit the next cue uh, and go ahead. Um, over here is our soundboard, and that's what I am going to be adding some sounds to. Um, our soundboard is um, fairly new for us. Just turn these on. There we go. And then that's on. And we'll turn on the speakers. And so that's going to turn on this ancient, ancient, ancient computer um, that I think runs Windows 95. Um, and that's going to load up in just a minute. Um, it's quite elderly. Um, and that, as soon as I turn on some more power over here, is where I'm going to load in some sound. So like I said, they are, and I have my little sound thing. I'm just gonna plug that in right now. And uh, I'm going to turn on the system. And that just allows me to hear into the theater. So I'm just going to start up my sound operator. Like I said, this is an old system. We use a, um, a sound program right here. That just loads up. And as you can see, um, there are a number of different cues that are here. Um, if I want to play any one of them that uh, 
that I've put in before. I can just add that to it and then just play the cue, which again, for the sound operator, it's just basically the click of the mouse. So that's something that I loaded in yesterday for they wanted to chase. Um, because it is Snow White, of course she talks to birds, so I gave them a couple of different bird sound effects. And let's see, do we have another one? Um, and so what they have asked me to add um, is actually um, some, uh, some new sounds. So let me just open up my passport, and like I've got right here, my kids theater music, um, and they wanted something that was suspenseful. So I have an account in something called um, uh, Audio Blocks, and that allows me to buy uh, royalty-free music, um, and that royalty-free music I can then add uh, to their show. So I've got all that, I'm going to save that up, and now this is part of the show. Um, they can cut them out if they don't like them. Um, but all they are here in the show, and if I want to hear what they sound like, I can just play that music. Oh my god, so suspenseful! So that's one, and then... If they want something kind of really, uh, scary... Oh my god, so suspenseful! And then suspense four... So anyway, um, now that that's all set, I can just cut those out and pop out my, uh, my thing, and then I just close down the computer. So one more thing uh, while I'm up in the booth. So the booth, you can watch um, the whole show from up here. As you can see, over on either side of this glass are two panels, and those are shaded so that you don't see the electronic equipment going through. The stage manager needs a clear view of the whole uh, set so you can see all of that. You can see backstage where actors may be waiting for their scenes and the audience members. Um, if you are up in the booth, uh, sometimes if somebody is doing something inappropriate in the audience, uh, like falling asleep, you can call them out on it. I find the booth the most fun place to be in the theater. Okay, so we're gonna head downstairs now. Um, this is not just a basement, and I'm sorry, the light is going to be crummy until we get downstairs. And if I actually can turn on the lights, that'd be good. Um, the light probably isn't going to be all that great, but this is one of the dressing rooms. As you can tell, it's a children's theater production right now. One, because there is a little bit of mess. There's me, hello. Um, but also because of all the little kids' clothes. So this is one of our dressing rooms. This is the larger one, which is underneath our, um, underneath our lobby. As you can tell, we have lots and lots of different types of things. So um, this is where all, we keep all of our spare costumes. Um, we've got novelty hats, we've got uniform hats, um, anything goes, which I don't think is the production anything goes. It's just lots of different things. We have pajamas. Um, there's even more over here. And then what's covered up is lots and lots of hanging stuff. So if you needed a fur coat or if you needed uh, period piece stuff, uh, belts and boas and ladies pants and all sorts of stuff. There's a top hat over here. Um, so let's go into the next room. And this one is on a different timer. So this is our furniture uh, and set piece uh, storage area. And as you can tell, it is very, very uh, well organized. And actually it's um, it's mostly because of space. This is probably as well organized as we can make it because we have to stack so many different kinds of chairs on top of one another. Um, but as you can see we have uh, lots of uh, chairs and underneath them there's tables and if you need a painting we have a few paintings over here. We have a couple different kinds of clocks. Um, we have a very spooky looking baby and flowers, lots of flowers, things like that. Um, so now let's go out of here. And then this is this area here. Let me turn on some more lights because it's really hard to see. Uh, there's light switches everywhere here. Okay, this is our little kitchenette. Um, when the uh, actors and actresses are downstairs, this used to be where we sold uh, 
where we sold concessions to everybody. Um, but now it's just for the actors and actresses, which is great. Um, they're able to, uh, to hang out down here. Um, underneath here, um, these doors always stick, but let's see if I can open it. Ah, nope. Like I said, the doors always stick on the side. Uh, let me see if I can get them on the side. Ah, cool. So over on this side, that's a, I hope, <laughs> a fake hand. Yep. There's our the little fake hand that is kind of gruesome. Um, maybe you need to see him. Um, probably from Frankenstein, which was a show we did recently. Um, we have a lot of props, little, little hand props. Um, there's uh, other props and little small things in here. I don't know if you can see, we have plates and cups and all sorts of things you might want to work with. Um, and then finally, let me just take it over here, is the shop where we have paints over here. And then the different wood. We, do, we don't keep... Uh, wood and metal or anything that we build sets with, but all of our tools we do keep here. Um, and lots of paint. So anyway, that is the tour of my theater. I am going to take off. Um, like I said, I just came here to run a quick errand, which is just to uh, put the sound into the, uh, into the soundboard. Um, and hopefully the kids will really like the different pieces of suspense music I gave to them. I'm going to close up here and uh, I will talk to you again soon.